So how long does it really take to learn to code? A lot of people ask this, and it doesn't help that there's so many resources out there that promise ridiculous progress, like learning to code in 48 hours or a couple weeks. Well, I'm here to give you a reality check. Not only have I owned and operated a coding boot camp, but I've also worked with university programs and helped design their curriculum, and I've worked on online courseware. So I have a lot of data points on how long it really takes people to learn to code in each format. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'll give you some tips on practicing effectively and using your limited time the best way you can for the quickest learning experience. Even in 2023, where we have a down market, skilled and experienced coders are still a hot commodity. The Bureau of Labor and Statistics puts the 2021 median pay at $109,000 per year and predicts 25% growth through 2031. But let's get real about the learn to code fast and easy myths. If learning to code was as easy as binge watching a Netflix series, coders would be as common as cat videos and paid a lot less. And if we're going to look at how long it really takes to learn to code, we need to look at the most popular ways of learning and break down both the training time and the calendar time that those learning options typically take. Now let's start with higher education. A typical degree program takes between 30 and 36 credit hours of in-major credits to get a bachelor's degree. And the rule of thumb for STEM courses is that students should be spending about three hours outside of class for every credit hour they earn inside of class. Now what that means is in a typical 16 week semester, you'll get about 144 hours of total practice time, most of it out of the classroom. Now for 30 to 36 credit hours, this would mean that you would spend between 1440 to 1728 total hours to get your bachelor's degree. But we need to mention a very important thing about degree programs. Not all of those courses in major are relevant to programming. So if you go look at a course list that is available to a typical computer science major, you are going to see courses like discrete math and circuitry and design. These things make you a better technical professional overall, but they don't have a lot of utility in entry-level programming jobs at insurance companies and banks and retail companies that are some of the biggest consumers of technical talent. Most students who come out of a degree program take anywhere from four to six courses that are directly related to software development at normal companies. So what we have to do is adjust those training hours down to about 576 at the low end to 864 at the high end, which is what you would get for four to six courses. Now, naturally, this happens over the course of a degree program, which takes most people four to five years to complete. And now that we have that range of hours for a degree program, we're ready to jump over and talk about coding boot camps. Now, I have a lot of personal experience in this space because I owned and operated a boot camp from 2013 to 2017. And my boot camp was one of the first ones in the country that taught .NET and Java. And our program ran for 12 weeks and it expected 40 to 60 hours a week from each student. And most of them did spend 60. So our program clocked in at 720 hours. And if you look across the boot camp space, you'll see that most boot camps clock in between 11 and 16 weeks if they're full time, and they usually expect 40 to 60 hours. So that range that the colleges have is very similar to the range that the boot camps have. Now, when I first got started in the space and most of the employers weren't aware of what boot camps were, there was a lot of initial skepticism because they were looking at the calendar hours. They'd say, well, how can you train somebody to be a professional in 12 weeks? And we used to say, well, go add up all the credit hours of the programming classes at the local university and extrapolate that out 
and you'll see that we're actually spending the roughly the same amount of hours training specifically for programming as the university degree programs do. So you can't really say that hour for hour the universities were teaching more programming, but they were definitely broadening out the students with their electives and all the other things that you learn in a degree program, whereas coding boot camps are purely vocational in direction and focus, which if you're not a FAN company, is kind of what you're looking for. And last, we have Learning on Your Own, the self-taught programmer. These people are using MOOCs like Coursera, they're buying books, they're watching YouTube videos, doing online tutorials, and they might even buy some online courses. But typically, their experience is a solo learning experience. They do not have a lot of mentorship, they do not have a lot of instruction. Now, typically, this path has a high failure rate. And that's because of human nature. If you look at the statistics on MOOCs like Coursera, only about 5% of people ever complete those courses because it's really hard to get up and motivate for long-term skill acquisition every day without a peer group, without a mentor, without an instructor. There's nobody pushing you. There's nobody stopping you from blowing it off and going and playing video games. If you get frustrated and get stuck, it can be very difficult for you to get unstuck and then you procrastinate and then eventually you give up. And this is very common because if everybody who took a free programming MOOC was successful in finding a job, we would not have the ongoing shortages we've had for the last decade, 2023 being an exception because this year kind of sucks. And this is something that I've addressed in my own courseware platform at Skill Foundry. We've created a community in Discord where myself and other senior developers hang out, answer questions, and we're available as a community to hold you accountable. So those completion rates go way up when you add in that human element, which is what we do over there. So if you're a self-learner, you should definitely check us out. Now, when it comes to how often should I practice? How many hours should I put in a week? What pacing should I expect to learn to code? What's the most effective? I have some thoughts there because like I said, I've worked with university programs, self-paced programs, and coding boot camps. Now, university programs, you have a big challenge because your courses are separated by semesters. They usually don't cleanly flow from one course into the next, which means that you have to spend time practicing in between your semesters and over summers so that you don't lose the skills that you learned. So I often recommend to college students that you buy online courses and participate in those things during the breaks so that you should keep sharpening the saw, you keep broadening your skills, and hopefully you find things that give you the vocational stuff that you're missing in your degree program. And over in the coding boot camps and the self-learning, 40 to 60 hours per week is not sustainable. You are going to burn out if you do that. And you know, our 12 week boot camp, that was about the limit for most people. They actually deliberately took time off before they started their jobs because what we put them through was so intensive. So there's an upper limit there and you need to be wary of that, especially if you're going into a boot camp program. 40 to 60 hours a week, probably too much. So ideally, I recommend that people spend at least 10 to 20 hours a week if they're serious about learning to code professionally. And the other thing a lot of people do wrong is that 10 to 20 hours a week should not be bursty. That means you should not do it all Monday, Tuesday, and then take five days off before you touch the keyboard again. Just like learning an instrument and other skills, it's better for you to break that 10 to 20 hours up into blocks that you do consistently over the week instead of piling it into one or two days. That will be the most effective way to retain things, keep your frustration level low, and make sure that your brain has time to absorb and process all of the things that you are learning. So the last math I'm going to leave you with is that if you're a self-paced learner 
and you have an effective curriculum and access to a mentor 10 to 20 hours a week, you're looking at about 35 to 70 weeks to go from zero to hero because that's how long it's going to take you to get into that 700 hour range that falls smack dab in the middle of coding boot camps and university programs. That is the fastest that most people can go. But again, there's a lot of challenges to self-paced learners. You can get stuck in tutorial hell. You can get demotivated. You can lack mentorship. You may not have a structured curriculum. All of these things add up and the mistakes that a lot of those people make in their learning journey really slow them down. So if you go out and search a site like Reddit, Learn Programming, you will see a lot of self-taught learners take one and a half to three years to get that first job. And that's pretty typical. So what you're paying for in coding boot camps and courseware and even degree programs, if you go back to college and take a minor, if you already have a degree, what you're really paying for is time to market and acceleration to market and the peace of mind that you have a structured path. So how much is that worth to you? That's what you need to decide as a learner. So if you're somebody who's on your coding journey or about to start it, I hope that this video helps you set realistic expectations for how much to practice, what progress should look like, and how long it should really take to learn to code. I hope that all of you succeed in your journey. Happy coding.